am here. I made it. I'm at Flamingo. I'm in my room. Hello, my name is Brooke and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking all about Flamingo Crossings Village and absolutely everything you need to know about the housing complex. I have done copious amounts of research, I have lived there myself, and I will be living there again on my next program which literally starts like two weeks from today or I move down to Florida two weeks from today which is insane to me. I am so excited, I cannot wait, and today we are going to be talking all the things you need to know about Flamingo Crossings. This is going to be somewhat of a multi-part series so this video here is gonna be your basic information room types transportation amenities what's included everything like the factual stuff you need to know of course once I get to Flamingo again there's gonna be complex tours and a room tour of my room and then I also want to do a video where we just talk about more of like the hidden secrets like not the factual stuff but like the best places to hang out um, which pool might be your favorite hidden hacks or secrets um, all that kind of stuff but I thought that video would be a little bit better to film in person not you know while I'm just sitting here because it's a little easier to show you guys stuff when I'm there versus just showing you photos like I'm gonna be doing today so if you are watching this video I'm gonna assume that you are gonna be a Disney programs participant or are maybe a parent of a Disney programs participant or just really curious about Disney housing and what exactly is provided so we're gonna be talking all about that today and this is gonna be a long video but we are quite literally going through everything as an international student who's done three cultural exchange programs and about to do my cultural representative program I've lived twice in Vista Way I've lived once in Flamingo and I'm gonna be living a second time in Flamingo and I I love Flamingo so much. It is so much better than any of the old Disney housing complexes. Way better value for your money than the old Disney housing complexes. All of that stuff. So we are going to get right on into it. First things first, let's get into what the heck is Flamingo Crossings, if you do not know. Flamingo Crossings is the housing complex that houses participants on the Disney College program, Disney Professional Internships, as well as all the Disney International programs, including the Cultural Representative Program, Cultural Exchange Program, and Academic Exchange Program, which means that if you are living in Flamingo, you have the opportunity to meet people from quite literally all around the world. The complex itself, Disney lists as being one housing complex and one of their big selling points is now everyone's in one housing complex instead of the four different ones that used to exist. This is not really true. Flamingo Crossings is divided into East and West and they are about a five to ten minute walk away from each other or a quick like two minute bus ride. There's tons of buses all the time that go in between the two complexes but they are two separate complexes East and West. They are located kind of behind Animal Kingdom in the Winter Garden area of Florida and it is a beautiful area really up and coming area um, but it is currently lacking a lot of amenities that being said it is like I said up and coming and things are quite literally being built every single day there. Between east and west there are a total of 41 buildings that house over 10,000 students. I am not 100% sure whether the last few buildings are still under construction or they may have just finished construction I'm not 100% sure but there is either currently or will very soon be 10,000 students that live there. Within these 41 buildings Buildings, everyone lives in a community so each set of four or five buildings is represented by a Disney character they go a through I believe like G or something I don't know all of them off the top of my head I will put all of the characters right here but for example Group of buildings A is represented by Archimedes, group of buildings B is Bagheera, C is Cheshire Cat, and last year I was in building 15 which is D for Doc. When you move in you'll actually get a free lanyard that Disney will give you with the character of your buildings on it. Another great part about Flamingo is that absolutely everything is included in your rent. All the amenities including the gym, transportation everything is included the only thing you may have to pay extra for is a parking pass heat water trash like all of that is all included in the fees you pay the activities flamingo hosts are all included in the fees you pay while we're going through this and while you look at the fees just note that 
absolutely everything is included. You do not have to pay extra for any of these services and think of that also when we talk about the pricing. Going through the complex, we are going to start at the very front of the complex and work our way into the rest of it. So we're going to start with the transportation, the parking, we're going to walk into the front of the complex, talk about amenities, the community center, we're going to walk, talk about the pool area, the buildings, the room types, what's included in your room, all of that stuff. So starting right outside, there are obviously two options, bringing a car or not bringing a car. I've done Disney programs with a car and without a car, and personally, I like doing my programs without a car, which is probably a really unpopular opinion, but I do find gas and all of that to be very expensive, especially in the Orlando area, so I am more than fine taking the buses. That being said, the buses do not go everywhere. Where do they go? Well, there are multiple different bus routes, and you can view all of these bus routes on the app Passio Go. This is actually a really, really convenient app that I just talked about in my video about the 10 apps you should download for the DCP. And this app is going to tell you the bus times, you can live track the buses, um, you can see when you need to or what bus you need to take so you can get to work on time. They will notify you if there's any delays, etc. Very convenient app. But the buses themselves go to all four of the Walt Disney World theme parks and let you have access to the doors to the backstage areas where you're going to need to enter if you have to go to work. You're also going to be able to take these buses to go to any of the Walt Disney World Resort hotels. For both Magic Kingdom and Epcot, you're going to want to take a bus to one of the Walt Disney World Resort hotels if you are going to be playing in the parks as a guest and then transfer from there. Magic Kingdom, the easiest is a contemporary because it's less than a five minute walk to the front gates. As for Epcot, the easiest one is going to be probably the Riviera and you can just take the Skyliner over to the back gate. Hollywood Studios and Animal Kingdom, the buses do drop you off at the cast member entrances. However, it's very easy just to walk around the corner to the front entrance at both of those locations. But if you are working at a Walt Disney World Resort Hotel or you just want to go resort hopping, you can do that as well. The bus also goes to Disney Springs, but it is to be noted most of the time if you are going directly to Disney Springs, you will have to transfer at a Disney World Resort Hotel if you are going to be going to Disney Springs as a guest. But if you are a working cast member, you will be allowed to go straight to Disney Springs on that bus. Most Disney program students are gonna be working nighttime at Disney Springs, so certain times a day that bus gets really, really busy and they just wanna make sure that the cast members who need to get to work can get to work. Other than that, certain days of the week, the bus goes to the Super Target near the housing complex. And other days of the week, the bus stops at the Flamingo Crossings Plaza, which is straight down the street. You can also walk here if you'd like. It's a five to 10 minute walk from east and like a four or five minute walk from west. There are tons of different shops in this plaza, including a mini tourist target. Like it's a really, really small target, but it will have your essentials if you need anything the other days of the week. And like I said, is really easy to walk to. Um, the bus also goes to Cast Connections, which is the Disney discount store. If you do want to get any discount Disney merchandise, it's essentially like the Disney outdoor outlet stores at the premium outlets, but this one is cast members only and a lot bigger. If you are going anywhere else in Orlando, you will need to take an Uber that includes Universal Studios or maybe make a friend with a car if they are willing to drive you, but don't make friends just for their cars. If you are taking a car, you can purchase a parking pass that will be done through dorms on a day specified before you go on the program, about a month beforehand. You'll want to log into dorms, which is the Disney system for housing and such, um, and then you'll want to purchase a parking pass that way. Parking passes are limited in quantity, however, it's a lot better than it was. They do still sell out from what I've heard, so just be aware that if you cannot get a parking pass, you cannot bring your car. There is no other option. There are no nearby parking lots. The closest lot that you could potentially park in is about a half hour drive away in downtown Orlando. If you do not get a parking pass, you can physically not bring your car. Unfortunately, that is not optional. Flamingo also has gated entry at all the different entry points. So there's one entry point at each complex for cars and one entry point at each complex for pedestrians. You will have a Flamingo card. Now these cards don't really look like they're for each person. They're just white cards with the 
Flamingo Crossings logo on it, but they do have your photo attached to them. So for example, when you are walking through the entry point, you scan your card so the doors open for you. There is a security guard there and they're looking at your photo, which actually appears above your head. If you turn around and look back, your photo's right there and they'll be able to make sure that you are the person walking in without them having to check every single person's ID, which does make it a lot easier. At the car entry point, very similar thing. You're in your car, you scan it to open the gate and there's a security guard there as well. So now that you're through those gated entries, let's talk about what you're first gonna run into. Now, most of these things I'm gonna talk about, or every single thing except one of these things that I'm gonna talk about is on both complexes. So both east and west have everything that I'm gonna talk about unless I specify otherwise. So you walk into the complex and the first thing you're gonna come across is the community center. The community center has so many things and is kind of the go-to spot for everyone to hang out at the complexes. You're gonna have tons of lounge areas, there's spots where people can watch movies, there's like big screens and seating areas, they have tons of games, there's like pool, ping pong, um, old arcade games, they have these giant screens that you can play like game like touch screen games on like Fruit Ninja and Angry Birds and stuff if you and your friends want to do that. There's tables if you and your friends just want to chill and relax. I love going to this spot to edit because there's a lot of really nice tables. You can just pop in headphones and just kind of relax. The seats are really, really comfortable. There's also study rooms available to rent at both complexes. So all the study rooms are also named after Disney characters and themed to be such. So I know there's like a cocoa room. If you are studying, doing school work while you're on Disney program or just want a quiet place to work maybe you have a zoom interview anything like that you can easily do that and rent out one of those rooms once again included in the program fees if you want to do that there is a service window and this is where you're going to be able to rent out various things in the program whether you're looking for a wagon which is really convenient if you are going to the grocery store or you are needing like a broom dustpan Swiffer iron, anything for the games, so like pool cues, ping pong, rackets and balls, anything you could possibly think of, the service window probably has it. So you don't necessarily need to go and buy all these things for your apartment. For example, like if you don't want to buy a mop for your apartment because you're only going to be there like less than six months, you don't have to, you can just rent it from the service window. There's also a vending machine wall at each of the complexes. I was very impressed when I first saw this. I don't know, I'd never seen anything like this before and I think it's really high tech. So essentially what you do is you go up to the vending machine wall with your credit card, find which door you want something out of, swipe your card, open the door, grab out what you want, and then it just charges your card. Like it knows what you grab and it charges your card. And there is so much stuff in the vending machines from just like drinks, water, like your everyday snacks, chocolate bars, to literal like subs and stuff. So if you do need like a quick lunch or something like that, you can go to the vending machine and just grab that really quickly. It's really convenient. No, the prices are not the cheapest. I mean, they're vending machine prices, but if you are in need of a quick snack or I, you know, sometimes I'm like, I just really need need like a, a coke or something I'll go to the vending machine and just grab one because I won't buy a case of that because I don't like drinking it all the time on the upper level of both community centers at East and West, there is the fitness center. This is a state-of-the-art fitness center. It is gorgeous. There are tons of machines. You will never have to wait for a machine because these fitness centers are huge. The machines are absolutely beautiful, stunning, um, brand new. This place is amazing. There's weights, treadmills, like any machine you could possibly imagine they have it in these fitness centers. They're beautiful. And once again, that membership all included in your rent. It's really cool to see the fitness center, especially compared to the old fitness centers, the old complexes, because they used to have like three fitness machines, whereas these ones are huge and they just look so much better and are so amazing. Now at East only, you're also going to have Apprentice Hall beside the community center. Apprentice Hall is essentially going to be the spot for Disney programs and the Disney programs offices and such. Flamingo Crossings is not owned by Disney, it's run by American Campus Communities and they've just partnered with Disney to create this complex. So everything to do with housing and the amenities is American Campus Communities. Disney just has Apprentice Hall and that's where their kind of hub for everything is. So at Apprentice Hall you're going to find the programs desk. So if you're having questions about anything to do with work or your program specifically, not with housing, you're going to be able to go to the programs desk and ask them about it there and get a quick response. They're also going to deal with your pay cards, 
cards, extensions, um, if you are having any issues at work, all of that is going to be dealt with through Apprentice Hall. Apprentice Hall is also full of classrooms and these classrooms are where Disney hosts various seminars so they'll have higher up professionals come in and talk to groups of people about their jobs, they have like baking seminars, I went to a project management seminar, um, there is like so so many, they'll have animal specialists come in from Animal Kingdom to talk to you about stuff, so many different seminars all included, um, all you have to do is sign up in advance on dorms. Sometimes here they also host various character meet and greets or just other special events. Your Disney Traditions is also going to be here if you're on a Disney College program, um, cultural exchange program, I don't know about academic exchange program, but not cultural representative programs. But if you are on a CEP or DCP, your Traditions is probably going to be here. Once you step outside of these areas, you're going to come across the parcel room, and this is where if you're ordering any sort of Amazon package or actual physical like big package parcel that's where they are gonna be of course in the parcel room the parcel room you're gonna download the app parcel pending when you get a package it's gonna show up on the parcel pending app you go to the parcel room and you either type in the code that is on the app or you can scan the barcode and a random door in the parcel room is gonna swing open and your package is gonna be inside heading a little further outside each complex has two pools both pools are zero entry nice and large there's tons of seating around the pools really comfortable seating actually there are tons of umbrellas if you want to stay in the shade there's tons of spots to tan if you want to tan each pool has its own hot tub as well if you want to go in those each pool also has its own movie screen so you can call up the front desk and be like hey I want you to play Dumbo and they'll be able to play that on the screen. They can play anything, not just Disney movies, anything off Netflix, Disney Plus, um, Prime, I think they have Hulu too, like they have all the streaming services. So whatever you want them to play, they can play that for you. There's just so many different options. There's also a fire pit. This is a gas fire pit though, so you can't roast marshmallows, but is a really great spot to socialize with people. There is a sand volleyball and basketball court at both complexes. And then both complexes also have some Something called the Great Lawn and this is where Disney events are held so every welcome week they have a welcome event so most weeks they have a welcome event since there's an arrival day pretty much every Monday ever now and at the welcome event you don't just have to be the arrival to go anyone can go they usually have free food and drinks and stuff there's also grills around property if barbecuing is your thing and those are available for anyone to use so now let's talk about the actual rooms Every single room houses four Disney programs participants, every single apartment. So there will always be you and three other roommates. There is no way you can just live alone in your own apartment. It will always be you and three other roommates. At any point though, you are only ever allowed to link with one other roommate who has the exact same arrival and departure date as you. There's no flexibility to this. You are only allowed to link with one person and they must have the same arrival and departure date. And linking will be done during dorms sign up, which happens about a month before your program. I also did a video all about my personal dorm sign up. Um, I screen recorded me doing it and everything. I did not link with anyone, but you can see the process and how everything works. There are three different styles of apartments you could potentially get on Disney programs. So the first one is gonna be the most popular one and the one they have the most of and this is what is called a two by two. Is it a two bedroom, two bathroom apartment that houses four people? Two people are sharing a bedroom in this case and two people are sharing each bathroom and then all four of you share the common area. Next up, you're gonna have a four by two, which is four people in four bedrooms sharing two bathrooms. You're then going to have a four by four, which is four people, four bathrooms four bedrooms. When you are going to these programs, it is important that honestly you expect to get the two by two. This is what like 80% of people end up getting. This is the room type they have the most of by far and even if it's not your top preference, even if it's your last preference, there's still a lot of people that get these rooms. So honestly, I would go in with the expectations of having to share a bedroom and be happy if that is not the case. During dorms, like I said, you can select your room preferences so you can order them in order of of highest preference to lowest preference and everything in between. I've never got my highest preference ever. I've always got like my second or third choice in every room I've ever been in in Disney programs, but it always turns okay. I've shared a bedroom on 
two of my Disney programs, and I mean, yeah, sometimes roommates suck, but at the same time, like, you just need to learn to live with people, um, and sometimes roommates don't suck, and roommates quickly become some of your best friends. Think of it as you're making new friends, not as a bad thing. All utilities, like I said, are included, and you can use as much as you want of them with the exception of electricity. Electricity is capped, so so much is included, and then you'll have to pay extra. I've never heard of anyone actually having to pay extra, and you would probably have to use a lot of electricity to pay extra. I had the fan in my room going all the time. My roommates did too. We were super bad for forgetting to turn lights off. We ran the washer dryer all the time. Um, we ran the dishwasher all the time and we never got charged any extra. But the caps are as follows. If you are in a room where you have your own bedroom, the rate is $35 per person in the apartment. If you are in a shared bedroom, the rate is $25 per person in the apartment. Just try your best to make sure you shut lights off and stuff like that and you shouldn't have an issue. Don't make the AC too, too crazy. Um, nothing like that. In at least one building in each community, there's also going to be a building that has a mailbox room or just mailbox hallway, essentially. It's not actually a room, it's just kind of in the complex and you are going to have a key to this. Your apartment will have one key for the mailbox and you can go check this. This is where all like your snail mail and that is going to go to. So you will not get notifications when you get new snail mail, so just make sure you're checking this semi-regularly. Now back to roommates, like I said, you get to choose one person that has the same arrival and departure date as you. This is non-optional. They must have the same arrival and departure date or it's not gonna let you link with them. Now, when you do link with someone, it is a guarantee pretty much that you're gonna be linked with them. Obviously, Disney says this isn't 100% guaranteed just to kind of like cover their butts a little bit, but it is pretty much guaranteed. Now, what is not guaranteed is that you guys are going to be in the same bedroom or right next to each other in the apartment. So Disney assigns your apartment number, your room, like your bedroom within the apartment, and also which bed you will be sleeping in if you are in a shared bedroom. First off, you can move into an apartment that already has people living there. It's nothing like it used to be where everyone used to move in on the same day and everyone moved out around the same time. It's nothing like that. People are constantly coming and going on these programs. So Disney is simply filling rooms. I'd say it's more often than not that now that you're gonna move into an apartment with people already there. Let's just go with a scenario from my apartment from last year. There were four girls living there. Two girls moved out. Two girls, my other, my girls that end up being my roommates, moved in, Brooke and Abby. It's gonna get confusing because yes, I'm Brooke and there was another Brooke. Now, these two roommates moved out. Me and Alana moved in. And then Brooke termed, so Abby was still there. And then Kaylin moved in. And then Abby, Alana, and me finished our programs, so we all moved out. And three more girls moved in. So at no point there in all of that was there any empty apartment at any time or anyone moving in or out, all of us at the same time. So that is more common than not. So just be prepared that you're probably gonna move in with people already living there. And that being said, I wouldn't buy too much beforehand because you don't know what people already have. Like they may have a drying rack, they may have a toaster. You don't know, so I wouldn't buy too much until you get there. And I don't think I actually finished what I was talking about, about the bedding assigned. So if you link with someone, it doesn't mean you're in the same room. So if you link with someone, one person could be in this room over here and the other person could be this room over here and you both have to share a bedroom with a stranger. All linking guarantees is that you're gonna be in the same apartment. So you walk into your apartment and you're gonna be in the common area. The common area consists of a living room area, a kitchen, and a washer dryer area. So you walk in first, I'm like mentally thinking about what my apartment looked like in my head. Some of them of course have different layouts, but I'm thinking of my old apartment, which was a four bedroom, two bathroom apartment. You walk in, off to the side is gonna be a little closet that houses your washer and dryer. The washer dryer is like stacked washer dryer and some apartments do have a little shelf where you can put like your laundry detergent and that on. Some do not, it depends what other like units like I don't know if they have like air conditioning or water heater or whatever is also in that little closet there it depends how that's all set up then you're in the kitchen and the kitchen has a fridge a stove a dishwasher a large sink and tons of cupboard space like 
so much cupboard space we had completely empty cupboards because we just didn't have things to put in them um each person is going to get their own food cupboard which is really nice the food cupboards themselves so they're tall and then there's one shelf in the middle but if you can i highly recommend going to the dollar store and just buying like another shelf because with the two shelves like you could definitely put a third shelf in there if you wanted to so i would do that personally but other than that what is included in the kitchen if you're moving into an empty apartment is going to be eight plates four bowls eight cups eight utensils i believe there's two pots but there might only be one i believe there's a big one and a littler one one pan and a small trash can and that's going to be essentially it you're also going to have like your utensils spoons forks knives you're gonna have eight of each of those that's it so there's not a lot included in the kitchen um and if you are staying for any length of time like if you're staying for the summer it's probably manageable if you're just staying for like three months it's probably manageable if you're staying any longer period of time go to walmart and buy some cheap like cooking stuff especially pots pans that kind of stuff um just because like if everyone's using that stuff it's constantly going to need to be washed and then you're also going to run out of plates and bowls quickly that's only to a person and you have lunch and dinner and you need more plates so i highly recommend just going to like target walmart whatever just getting some really really cheap ones but once again don't do that until you move in because you don't know what your roommates have already bought if they've been there a while or what they're coming in with the living room has a three-piece sectional sofa that is like it's it's leather, so I don't know. I didn't find it like too comfortable, but some people do. I don't know, it wasn't my favorite. There's a large coffee table, a smart TV that you can log into all your streaming services on. Streaming services are not provided, but you can log into them on the TV. There's also a few cable channels and then a little um, TV stand under the TV. Off to each side is gonna be where two people are um, within that so common area here then each side you're gonna have like a set of bedrooms or one bedroom each two people on each side this is where the different room types come in and what everything looks like because once you get into room types and that everything's set up a bit differently obviously going first if you have a two by two that's gonna be the shared bedroom option so each side is gonna be mirrored copies of each other you enter in and you've entered into what is the vanity area of the washroom area so you open a door and it's like the vanity area you're gonna have a floor a double sink a large mirror each person is gonna have their own medicine cabinet and storage under the sink it's gonna be two doors one door is gonna lead to the toilet and shower area and then the other door is gonna lead to the bedroom in the bedroom you are gonna have two twin XL beds so they're not just twin they're twin XLs two closets two movable tables one ceiling fan, two dressers, one under the bed lockable storage cabinet that you will need to bring your own lock for, just like a locker padlock works totally fine, and a division wall that is going to be in between the two beds. And that is mirrored on both sides. If you are in a 4x2, you're going to have that same thing. You're going to walk into the vanity area, which looks exactly the same, two sinks, mirror, medicine cabinets, um, and the bathroom looks the same, toilet, shower, all that. The bedrooms, there's gonna be two doors that each go into their own bedroom then, and each bedroom is gonna have one full or double XL bed, a closet, a dresser, um, two under the bed lockable storage drawers, a ceiling fan, and that movable table. In the four by four, you're just gonna have the door because there's no vanity area because everyone has their own bathroom. So when you enter the door, you're gonna have one full or double XL bed, the closet, dresser, two under the bed lockable storage drawers, a ceiling fan, a movable table, then in the bedroom is going to be another door that you open up and that's going to have one single sink, a little bit of storage under there, one medicine cabinet, shower, toilet, um, bathroom. And that is essentially Flamingo Crossings. I think I pretty much covered everything. Um, if you leave comments down below, I'm going to try my best to answer them because I think I pretty much covered everything except for the costs. So let's talk about what this costs. I'm going to put on the screen right here what the current rent numbers are going to be for 2023 and 2024. Now let me see, let me pull up these numbers for myself. So the rent numbers that I'm putting on the screen right up here are old housing costs from 2018. 
okay? So as you can see, um, those numbers have quite a large difference on them, unfortunately. But I want you to think about all the amenities that were included and know that the old housing complexes did not have these. Um, we're also going to do a little bit of a price comparison. So what we're going to do is compare the two bedroom, two bathroom room with the commons two bedroom, four person room. This is going to be the closest comparison of old housing complexes. The commons ones considered the nicest one and most other places you like had a shared bedroom with bunk beds potentially, whereas the commons you could have a two bedroom, four person unit. There'd be two bathrooms in that unit and also a washer dryer. The commons was the only spot with washer and dryer included in the unit. So the price for that is $132 a week. Let's do some price comparisons. In 2018, cast members were paid $10 an hour on the Disney College program. So let's go with $10 an hour times an average of 40 hours a week. So of course that's $400. We're going to subtract 132 and we are left with $268 after rent is taken off. We're not going to talk about taxes because they're that's whatever. So in 2023, it is $191 for the two bedroom, two bath, four person apartment. So rent, uh, Disney cast members right now are currently being paid $16 an hour on the college program. So 16 times 40 hours a week is $640. Subtract 191, 449. That is like almost double what your after rent would be from if you were living in the same apartment in the commons. But let's look at this a different way because inflation and all of that other stuff, okay? So let's look at this in a percentage wise. Let's do 191 divided by 640. So rent is approximately 30% of each paycheck. Now let's do 132 divided by 400. That's 33%. So Disney is actually taking a lesser percentage of your paycheck now than what they were taking when old housing existed. And this housing is so much nicer. The buses don't break down as much. Everything is located nearby. There is the plaza walking distance for any necessities you need. The only thing I wish was different was that the bus also went to Walmart because I do miss not being able to go to Walmart since Target's more expensive for a lot of food items than Walmart is, I've personally found. The pools are 10,000% nicer. There's more of them. The complexes themselves are just night and day different. Like there's, there's truly no comparison. That's why I think these prices are worth it. And that is going to be my video all about Flamingo Crossings. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope this helped you learn some stuff. If you want to find out more about Flamingo Crossings and all that kind of stuff, make sure you check out my channel and subscribe because I move in in like just over two weeks. I leave for Florida in two weeks and I cannot wait. Um, and all those other Flamingo videos are coming. So thank you again so much for watching and I hope you have a magical rest of your day.